Welcome everyone. This is Vani Kola, Managing Director, Kalari Capital, bringing you this Leadership in Crisis series. And in this episode, I'd like to explore one company that faced an unprecedented challenge. I hope we can collectively gain insights and learnings that we can take into our own journey through this episode. Imagine starting a company that was anticipated to change the world of biotech and revolutionize healthcare, but ends up being one of the biggest failures in startup history. This is really a story about the dark side of entrepreneurship that is often ignored. The madness of funding mania many times allows us to ignore the obvious questions about the fundamentals of the business and basic governance that should be core to any company. It's also a story of how leaders can easily get blinded by their own vision and how this can have unprecedented consequences. This is really a playbook on what leaders should not do in their quest to change the world by any means. This story of Theranos, founded by Elizabeth Holmes, a self-made billionaire who's now facing 20 years in prison and indicted for 11 counts of fraud and conspiracy. For those that are not familiar with this story, let me give you a brief outline. Theranos was a healthcare technology startup founded in 2003. They were set up to revolutionize the laboratory blood testing, which had not gone through much change in many decades. Holmes was the visionary behind the company. She pitched a technology that was both cost efficient and simple for the customers. She promised that she could run dozens of blood tests with just a prick on the finger. Her zeal and passion for her vision was infectious. She dropped out of Stanford at the age of 19. She wanted to create a world where everyone had access to actionable healthcare information. She was very convincing. From the onset, she was able to get very high profile investors to back her. That gave her legitimacy to build one of the most spectacular stellar boards that has ever been put together for a startup. She also managed astonishingly to raise capital on the condition that she would not reveal the secrets of how actually the technology worked and that she would have the final say for everything that the company would do. Taking away the core governance of a board that has served well for decades of many companies. Amazingly, savvy and successful investors were so enormous by the vastness of her vision that they agreed to all of these conditions without really doing deep diligence on practicality of her vision taken in by the noble vision that she was able to articulate. Somehow, the science of this, whether science could actually allow for the vision to become reality was never at the center of the discussion. Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes managed to raise an astonishing $700 million with little to no diligence on her technology. The company had a meteoric rise and they were valued at $9 billion within a short span of four years and they came crashing down to bankruptcy and zero dollars. It appeared that when they built their first machine on this vision of instant results and blood testing, they had patented technology. But in fact, the patent was never really clear on how the machine actually worked. In the end, 
the device was never able to live up to the promise. Despite no real proof of science, no real proof of product, based on Holmes articulation and conviction, everyone jumped into the hype bandwagon. Holmes was a celebrity and she was often touted as the next Steve Jobs. And who would want to miss out on the story to be in on the next Steve Jobs? In 2015, two employees, Tyler Schlutz and Erica Chung, knew that the company was setting dangerous precedent and in fact harming patients' health by even producing wrong results. They found the courage to be whistleblowers. They exposed to Wall Street Journal the toxic culture in the company that suppressed truth and the faulty technology. As a result, both of them faced significant harassment from the high-powered lawyers that Theranos has hired. Despite intimidation, personal bankruptcy, and personal threats, they stood their ground for the public good. Holmes was charged with multiple counts of fraud and negligence. She was charged on exaggerated false statements on the company's technology, business, and financial performance. In a short time, 2018, Theranos shut shop. This story of noble vision, but manipulation, deceit, and greed gives us pause for reflection and thought on leadership values. Lesson one, founders should watch always to not get blinded by the grandness of their own vision. Of course, having a vision is a must, but it's equally important to understand where one can actually actualize that vision and deliver on the promises made. In this case, Holmes was so consumed that she was willing to turn a blind eye to the harm she was causing to people and the fact that she was playing, in fact, with lives of people by doctoring results. And unfortunately, there was no one to checkpoint her, nor did she ever stop to self-reflect. Lesson two is for investors and board members. They must always do their job of questioning and providing governance to the management team, which includes the founder and the CEO. It's the duty of the board members and investors to question and operate from a point of knowledge. Speaking up may neither be easy nor popular, but it is imperative to not lose the sense of right and wrong and the larger responsibility that investors and board members carry to the company and its customers beyond the founder and the management team. If the board of Theranos, including the investors, had questioned the unethical practices early on, instead of turning a blind eye, the matter wouldn't have snowballed into the disaster it eventually turned to. Lesson three, harder lesson is for employees, having the courage to speak up for the greater good. Most employees don't have the leverage to speak up. How do you handle a situation where you are complicit to the problem that is causing true harm. If Erica and Tyler hadn't taken a stand, millions of lives would have been affected before matters were perhaps discovered. Make it a point to speak up instead of staying silent. It might be risky, but it can pay off in the long run. However, the burden can't really be on employees only. It is important for company cultures to offer safe spaces for employees to speak up and voice their concerns. Lesson four is actually for media who are meant to be the harbingers of truth. Today, media is not immune to the lure of questionable practices 
to drive TRP. However, media can also be a force of good. And as we have seen in this case and in other cases, ethical journalism can go a long way in protecting the public at large. The Wall Street Journal expose where the journalist was again ridiculed by the company and intimidated by lawyers went a long way to get the public to truly understand the illicit practices of Theranos. Media has the power to create change and hence has the responsibility to wield that power wisely. Last lesson is really around corporate governance. It must have a place of importance in a company's growth. Purpose of corporate governance is not bureaucracy. It is to build an environment of trust, transparency, and accountability. We can place the corruption, negligence, and fraud at Theranos that became possible at the footsteps of lack of poor corporate governance. The right checks and balances to escalate issues and spending time to listen and truly be vigilant is very important role that leadership and boards need to play. Starting a company, of course, is a challenging endeavor and it requires a lot of trial and error. But the right leadership approach, team alignment, and staying true to your human values in order to create success should never be compromised. The story of Elizabeth Holmes for me is really about no matter how determined you are to change the world, straying away from your vision and ethics can only lead to downfall sooner or later. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Leadership in Crisis and this story offers you key learnings and reflection in your own startup journey.